Hey folks, Dr. Mike here for Renaissance Periodization. Today's topic is an interesting one. It asks the question, do high friction machines lead to less muscle growth per any unit of effort? I will tell you up front, this is speculative. It's very speculative. A lot of our videos you can take to the bank is probably true. This one is just some food for thought for you guys to think about and see if your own experiences or your own assessment of the situation logically lines up with what I'm saying. So here's the deal. What the hell is a high friction machine? Well, if you think about it, if you're moving around dumbbells or barbells, the friction is like the air, which is to say almost zero. If let's say you're in a real rusty Smith machine and you push the bar up, you can feel the friction of the machine. Like you have no weight on there and it feels like 80 pounds. But then when you let go of the bar, it frictions back. So it's like, you actually have to pull the bar down to get it, right? Extreme example. But in any case, think about a machine that has a high degree of friction inside, right? This high degree of friction versus, let's say, a very well-oiled Smith machine versus a very poorly oiled Smith machine, one has a lot of friction, one does not, may lead to some predictable effects that could impact hypertrophy. First, if you have a lot of friction, the concentric phase is much harder than it normally would be with, say, 225 pounds on there. Say you're doing some presses. The concentric is way harder because it's the load, full load. Gravity still works the same way, plus friction. So you have to push maybe the equivalent of 250. That means you get fewer reps at 225 than you would have. You get the same amount of reps at 250. Good news, the amount of force generated on the concentric has to be higher than you would need to lift 225. It has to be 250 pounds, which is great. More hypertrophic stimulus on the concentric. All right. However, if we examine the eccentric, remember, gravity points in one direction, but friction is bidirectional. Either way you push it, it's friction. So when you're pushing against the friction and against gravity, it's 250 on the way up. When you're taking it back down, the friction actually helps you because you're not pulling the shit back down. You're riding it down. The friction is actually working against gravity. And now maybe it's 200 pounds on the way down. So first of all, if we get fewer reps at 225, let's say we, we wanted to get, oh, I don't know, 10 reps, but due to the super high friction, we got eight. That's too few repetitions where you're exposed to a high degree of eccentric load. Now, if you say, hold on a second, if the friction on the way up makes it harder, but on the way down makes it easier. So let's call it 225 with high friction or low friction still leads to 10 reps, usually in, in practice, it doesn't work like that. Usually if it's a high friction, you get fewer reps. But even if it's the same number of reps, because the eccentric component is with 200 pounds because the friction takes away from the load, that means less eccentric load with the higher friction that you have. The more friction, the less eccentric load, right? This happens essentially through essentially what I would call rail riding. Like you can have your muscles absorb all the load, or if you're clever even, and sometimes this happens subconsciously, if you push the machine down forward or back a little, as opposed to just up and down, on the way down, you can ride the rails, increase the friction even more because you're pushing the machine into itself, and then the way down starts to be much easier, maybe 175 pounds on the eccentric. This is not good because likely eccentric loading, the eccentric phase, the slow lowering of training is a bit more hypertrophic probably than the concentric or the isometric where you just hang out. So maybe per any rep, 45% of its hypertrophic stimulus comes from concentric pushing or whatever, pulling, moving the right way, moving the weight where you want it. And then the return, the eccentric may contribute to something like 55%. Or like, I don't know, 35, 45, and the rest is isometric, something like that. So the, the eccentric is likely, from a bunch of different studies, a little bit more hypertrophic, potentially. This is bad news because with a high-friction machine, we're taking that balance of concentric to eccentric. And ideally, I mean, it's, with free weights, it's right in the middle. Ideally, it might even be tilted to eccentric a little bit, but we're taking it, we're tilting it the other way from where it's theoretically likely optimal. So you get less eccentric loading, more concentric loading, and that may make 
the situation much less or a little bit less hypertrophic per any given number of sets that you do in a high friction environment versus low. Now, we also know that a unique modulator of hypertrophy is when we're at a deep stretch, the eccentric forces during that last third of the movement, stretch under load, may cause a lot of hypertrophy. Well, hold on a sec. Uh, loaded stretch with a much less, much lower eccentric load is particularly hard hit. I mean, it would be one thing if studies showed, and they so far don't, that it's the peak contraction that really grows last third, really grows the most muscle. Then we could say, hey, fuck it, like whatever. Smith machines are even better than free weights because, we, you know, that last part is even harder with friction. And in a load's lighter, so there's less of a chance to get hurt on the bottom, great. But it's the other way around. It's this part that grows the most muscle, and that's the part that is the easiest. And per any number of sets or reps that you do, you just don't get as much exposure to that nasty low eccentric as you would with a lower friction device. So far, not so great. Point number three is an observational point that I have made. And please, in the comments, let me know if you've made the same observation. I tend to notice that from machines that are very, very high friction to machines that are very low friction, all the way to free weights, I tend to get more sore the less friction I'm exposed to, and concomitantly less sore the more friction I'm exposed to. So if I'm using, and I've used crap load of machines all around the world traveling and living my Lamborghini lifestyle, and usually I have a cigar in my mouth while I do the machine, and I've noticed that if it's a high friction machine, in most cases, I do a bunch of sets, and I'm like, eh. I'm not getting as sore, I'm not getting as pumped, I don't feel a ton of tension in the muscle as much as possible, where if it's a low friction machine or free weights, I get fucked up ultra fast. Maybe that's because the low friction and the free weights have a much more exposure for me for that eccentric loading, especially for that bottom third of the movement. Maybe. So, final point. Taking all this together, what can you do? First, Consider avoiding ultra-high friction machines. If you have a machine that moves really smooth and one that's kind of creaky, maybe use the smooth one. A little counterintuitive because the creakiness is like, well, this machine is hard. Mm -hmm, yeah, hard on the concentric, but how is it on the eccentric? And like, if you had to be honest, you're like, eh, it's a little easier on the eccentric because I can ride out the friction. Like, that's not what you want. Second is use well-oiled machines. So like if you have a machine that's by design not high friction, but it's well-oiled, and then the one you get, a, a lot of times there's two Smith machines at a gym. One of them is moving super easy, and the other one's like 9,000 years old, and no one's ever dripped any oil in it. It's like barely creaking around. Don't use that one. Use the one that's low friction. This is a bit of a jump, but maybe consider using more free weights if you tend to notice this in your training, because if you prefer, and if it's possible, when you use free weights, you probably have more eccentric loading, essentially close to zero friction, and maybe you can benefit more set-for-set, rep-for-rep, muscle growth-wise. Second to last, try to gauge your own stimulus to fatigue ratio, how hard the lifting is, how much your joints hurt versus how much of a pump you get, how much tension you perceive, how much soreness you get, how much of a burn, all that good stuff. Try to see if on the high versus low friction stuff, you can tell a difference in your own experience. Because you might be on the other end where you're like, dude, shut the fuck up. Like, actually, high friction machines work better for me. and They pump me up more, maybe more sore. Maybe I'm totally wrong. Maybe you're like, ah, I can't really tell reliably. Or maybe you're like, dude, I fucking notice the same thing. So if it's true with you that, you know, if you do the real low friction lab, uh, tricep cable machine versus the high friction one, the high friction one seems like you're working really hard, but afterwards you're like, I don't know, I tried hard, but I don't think anything happened. Where on the low friction one, it seems pretty tough, not tr crazy, but after you're like, oh my God, I'm pumped out of my mind. Maybe that's a good thing. Maybe you can use that on your own training. Lastly, please don't take this entire lecture too seriously. This is very speculative on my part. I wouldn't put any money on it. Just an idea, just food for thought. Give it some thought. Let me know what you think in the comments. And listen, if, if you disagree with me, say it nice. I've been going through a lot of stuff personally, and I'm just, I'm just, I'm on the edge, guys. I want to cry every other minute. Just don't be mean, please. And if you're mean, make it funny. See you next time.